All right, in this lesson, we're gonna be looking at the effective interest method for a bond that was issued at a discount. We're gonna be looking at how do we amortize that discount over its useful life using that effective interest method, which is different from the straight line method that we talked about in an earlier lesson. So let's get started here with helping you understand how do we make that calculation happen. So just kind of an overview, this method takes the bond discount and allocates it uh, based on an effective interest rather than the straight line method. Now the key idea today is, the key idea of doing this is that a dollar today is not necessarily worth the dollar tomorrow. Because of this time value of money difference, we gotta use a different method than the straight line method. Now this method is often linked to long-term bonds rather than short-term bonds. So we do this with long-term bonds um, because of that time value of money difference. So to kind of review of what we're trying to do here on your screen, we've got a kind of a idea of what, what's happening here. So when we issue the bond, we can only issue it at 98,450, but the bonds are worth 100,000. So we've got this difference here of 1,550 that we're gonna have to deal with. The way that we deal with it is we use this as additional interest expense for the period. Now this chart right here um, emulates the straight line method because this is the straight line. Uh, but in this case here, we're gonna be using the effective interest method and what you're gonna find out is it's gonna work something like this instead. So it's gonna have this curve um, when we talk about um, amortizing this 15 50. So that's what we're trying to do here at the end. Now mechanically, our interest that we are going to pay is going to be less than our interest expense. Why? Because we are actually borrowing at the beginning what, we, what seems like less than what the bond's actually worth. So you're gonna find that we're gonna have to deal with that by adding interest expense into our problem here so that we can get our uh, bond to go from 98,000 to $100,000. So that's what we're trying to do here. So some mechanics to help you understand what you're gonna need to know or understand. When using the, uh, we will be using the bond's carrying value. So we're gonna, the bond's carrying value, which is what we're gonna calculate, and the effective market interest rate to calculate the interest expense. So to calculate interest expense, we need the carrying value of the bond and the market value, sorry, the market interest rate at the time that we issued those bonds. We're also gonna need the bond's face value and the stated interest rate to get the amount of interest that we are paying, because we pay based on what the bond's face value and its um, stated interest rate um, on the bond. So once we know that's what we're paying in interest to our bond holders. So let's take a look at our example here. On January 1, when the market interest rate was 10%, company A completed a $240,000, 9% bond issued for 225,000. So they collected 225,000, but the bonds were worth $240,000. Um, the bonds pay interest each December 31st and matures in 10 years, assume company A uses the effective interest method to amortize the bond discount. So we issue it at 225, the face value is 240. We've got this difference here. This difference we're gonna have to amortize and this difference is going to be 14,747, yeah, 14,747. We're gonna have to allocate that over the useful life of the bond using the effective interest method. So again, just giving you a picture of you of what we're trying to do. That 14,747 is basically more interest expense we're gonna have to accrue in our bond so that we can get it to our 240,000 that we're gonna have to pay in 10 years. So let's look at the journal entry of the issuance. So when we issued it, we know that we got cash. How much cash did we got? Well, we got $225,000 in cash. So I'm gonna debit cash in the amount of 225,243. Then we know that we owe 240,000. So we're gonna credit the bonds payable in the amount of 225,243. Sorry. 240. 
$240,000. So $240,000, I apologize. But debt credit, bonds payable, $240,000. So what's left, we are missing a debit here to make sure our debits equals our credits. So that amount is going to be $14,757. And we are going to debit discount on bonds payable. Okay, so that's what our journal entry for the issuance of the bond is going to look like. Debit to cash for 225, 243, credit to bonds payable 240, and then the plug would be the discount on bonds payable. So now that we have that, then it's time to go one year in advance and figure out what that interest expense is going to look like. So first thing that we're going to calculate is the interest payable. How much interest are we going to pay? to our bond holders. And it's based on the bond's face value as well as its stated interest rate. So we know that a face value of this bond is $240,000. We also know that the bond's interest is 9%. That's not the market rate. So this is 9% the bond's issued for. And then that's one year, 12 over 12. So the amount of interest that we need to pay our bond holders will total $21,600. As far as interest expense, remember in order to calculate interest expense, we're gonna need to take the carrying value and multiply it by the market interest rate. So in this case, the carrying value since this was our first year, is 225,243. We're gonna multiply this by the market rate of 10%, and we're gonna multiply that by 12 over 12. And we're gonna get 22,524. And there's 30 cents, but I'm gonna go ahead and leave that off here. So that's the interest expense. And if you notice, our interest payable is less than our interest expense. That difference is, is that different, that difference is what we're gonna make up because we issued it for less than what they're really worth. So the discount on bonds payable, um, amortization is going to be 22,524 subtracting 21,600 equals $924. So in this first year, we are going to amortize $924 of the discount. So now that we have this calculation, let's go ahead and look at the journal entry. So our journal entry first is we can start with our interest expense. We know what that is. So we're going to debit interest expense in the amount of 22,524. We're debiting interest expense because it's actually an expense. Increases in expenses are debit. We also know that we're gonna have to pay cash to our bond holders and this amounts to 21,600. So we're gonna credit cash in the amount of 21,600. We know we need a plug here and it's gonna be a credit. So 924 and that credit is going to go to discounts on bonds payable. So credit discount on bonds payable in the amount of 924. So it's gonna reduce our discounts from that 14,757 down $924. So that's what our journal entry would be for that first year. Now, just like on the premiums, let me show you an amortization chart. I know there's a lot to it, but let me walk you through. So we know, what do we know? Well, we know in year zero, we issue these $240,000 bonds for $225,243. The difference would be $14,000. A 747. So that $14,000 difference is the discount on bonds payable. So once we've done that, then we calculate our interest payable. Our interest payable is 21,600. And notice it's the same all the way down. Then we need to calculate the interest. So the calculation of the interest amount is we are going to take uh, the carrying value of 225. Uh, 243 and multiply that by 10%. That's what we get over here. And the difference between the interest amount and the interest payment is our amortization on the bond, 924. That amount gets subtracted from our discount on bonds uh, payable. So that gets subtracted from here to get to 13,823. And then we do it all over again. The carrying value goes um, 
up to 226,166 because this got reduced. So 240 minus 13,823 is 226,166. And then we do it all over again. Multiply that by 10%, we get that 22,618. And then we subtract that from our interest payable to get our amortization of the discount. And we'll keep on doing that until we get to the point where our carrying value equals our bonds payable, which we will do in the 10th year when we make this last entry. So when we make that last entry, our bonds payable will equal our carrying value because there will be no discount on bonds payable. Now remember that this difference here, that's gonna happen here at the very bottom. Um, there may be a difference there due to rounding. So I round it, I, I don't know if I round it at all, but if I did round, I might have a different number, but those numbers should be the same. So that is a look at the effective interest method of bond amortization for a bond discount. I know there was a lot there, but really if you understand the mechanics, um, I think it's actually pretty easy. The, the real hard part is making sure that you keep straight the bonds at face value with the interest uh, stated interest rate and then the bonds carrying value and the market interest rate. So doing a chart like I just showed you is gonna be tremendously helpful to keeping it all straight and figuring out what that amortized interest amount is every period. So hope you enjoyed this lesson and we'll see you in the new section or the next section or we'll just see you later. Hey guys, if you like this video, make sure you press the like button below. And if you're looking for worksheets that go along with all of these lessons, head over to my website at patrickleemsa.com or click in the link in the far right. And I've got your next lesson right over here. So just click that link and it'll take you to that video. So until then, we'll see you in the next lesson.